Welcome to Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm the Director of Product Marketing for our cloud providers of VMware. And we're at VM Explore this week in Vegas, and I'm joined by Eric. So, Eric, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Eric Stein. I'm a Senior Staff Solutions Architect in our cloud provider program at VMware. And we're in this really cool area at the moment. It's, it's quite a, a massive room for hands-on labs. So yes. Why don't you, Eric, just tell us what is hands-on labs, first of mm -hmm. all, and how did it come about? Sure. Oh, well, we've been doing hands-on labs uh, at the old VMworld uh, conference and now Explore. Uh, so we've been doing it for a number of years. And the you know, years past, uh, we actually had kits of gear in each room. <laughs> and uh, we had to reset everything. And uh, we, as things evolved, uh, we eventually started uh, building the labs in VMware Cloud Director. And so that's what we're running now. All of these labs are basically vApps in Cloud Director. And so they're all self-contained and it allows all of our users to, you know, take all these labs so we can have, you know, 400 people taking the same lab or different labs and, it, you know, they don't know or care where it's running. They're actually spread around uh, different data centers around the world. Right. And so the users don't know or care and that's the beauty of it. So mm -hmm. Cloud Director is the key to this, right? It's running everything at the back end for the provisioning and the tear up, tear down of the labs themselves. Correct. Now, yes. What, what sort of scale are we talking about? Well, uh, we're midweek right now. So uh, after, as of uh, last night, I think we've uh, created and destroyed about 50,000 VMs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that's proper service provider scale, right? I mean, that's... That's Absolutely. Significant, that's significant. And what have past years been like in terms of the total? Uh, I remember, I uh, can't remember last year's numbers, uh, 2019 uh, was the last uh, year that we had VMworld, uh, uh, you know, in person. And uh, from memory, I think that was 110,000 VMs at the end of the week. Okay. So four days, 110,000 VMs created and destroyed. It's pretty good. So this is a great facility for, you, for people if they just want to come and you know, trial it, see what it's like. But it's actually a full instantiation of whatever it is you're after, right? Right. Well, the, the labs, we have a mix. Uh, and we have a lot of mix. We have a lot, lots of different labs focused on different products. Uh, but we uh, also have some labs that are kind of clicked through ISM. We have, at the conference, we do have some hybrid labs that actually are connecting to some of our SaaS services as well. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was your new Cloud Director Lab, because uh, you know we had Cloud Director Labs. You've been running them since Word Go, right? Uh, well, past seven-ish years, yeah. So you know your stuff there, right? <laughs> and we've seen the Cloud Director portfolio, the Cloud Provider platform expand and have like NSXT, Advanced Load Balancer, and other components now. Cloud Director availability is key. Um, so what does this new lab? look like and what kind of versions are we talking about in uh, the Cloud Director Lab? Sure, yeah. So uh, the uh, Cloud Director Lab, in years past, I uh, actually built two separate pods uh, for just showing Cloud Director with components like Ops and NSX and vSAN. Uh, and then we had a separate one just for Cloud Director availability. Right. Uh, this year, I merged them into one giant pod. And a uh, giant, 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 giant <laughs> pod. Yeah, it's like 2.8 terabytes of storage. Wow. Uh, but um, the beauty of that is now I can do things that we couldn't do before. So the, the Cloud Director Availability Lab was, you know, basically just showing Cloud Director Availability. So when they came out with a management pack for ops, I couldn't show that. Of course. Never it's, I snuck it in there this year. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so this year's pod has, uh, you know, obviously Cloud Director. I did actually two different versions. Uh, so there, there's a site A and a site B, which are necessary for to show off availability. But I also like to be able to show VCD multi-site. And so we can do that with both of those. But I built it out so uh, site A is using uh, 10 for 2. Okay. Site B is using 1041 because I also wanted to show off Lifecycle Manager. Oh, really? That's uh, in the lab as well. It That's is. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, a little bit uh, in the What's New module showing off Lifecycle Manager and upgrading uh, Site B VCD from 1041 to 1042. Nice. Okay. So you've uh, got um, dual site. So you've got that multi site VCD <laughs> cluster. Yes. Um, got Cloud Direct availability for primary, secondary, 
second. We show multiple use cases there. So that's actually a, a separate lab, but it's using the same pod. Uh, and so we show, uh, I think, the primary use case when we, you know, we were targeting was on-prem vSphere to a cloud director target. Yeah. Uh, but then we also show cloud director to cloud director from both the admin perspective as well as a tenant perspective. Right. And then we also show the new vSphere to vSphere capability as well. Oh, fantastic. All right. So vCenter to vCenter. So you don't actually, you know, you don't need to showcase the Cloud Direct piece in there. You're right. It's a separate module in there just showing vSphere to vSphere. Yeah. That's... Love it. Okay. So Cloud Direct availability. <laughs> Let's talk about NSX and what versions of NSX you've got. Ah, yeah. So we have NSX T4. Right. And so that's new for this year. Um, and so uh, it's just built in, obviously. We don't have uh, you know the, a lot of the automated functionality in VCD without NSX. Yeah. So, yeah, we need it. but as part of that, we you know the, uh, the we have the tenant structure built in there for tenant one, taking advantage of the edge. Uh, there's a section in the NSX module showing distributed firewall management. Uh, Zero so. trust by design. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we got that new cap uh, capability with the uh, dynamic firewall tagging, I believe. In yeah, right. So yes, you you uh, you basically you define um, you know uh, security uh, sets, and yeah. then you can you know put those in your rules. Yeah. So, which is great for <clears throat> providers who are looking to um, provide a zero trust cloud to the customers, but they got zero idea what the customers actually going to do. So this way, right. any VMs that get spun up automatically inherit the, the right policy. Yeah, and actually, now that I'm thinking, I think uh, in there I uh, walked through setting up a dynamic rule. Uh, I used a, a basic concept uh, for like SQL servers, uh, where you know if, if name contains SQL because <laughs> everybody does that, yeah. you know, then it's included. So if somebody spins up a VM with SQL anywhere in the name, it would be included in that group. Yeah. And that, that's, that's like for me, that's the the basic sort of enterprise grade cloud that our providers should be doing because this functionality is there and it's it's included, right? I mean, absolutely. You're paying more for distributed firewall, and that's a great option for service providers. So let's talk about the advanced load balancer piece. So we got the old Avi solution now, NSX advanced yeah. load balancer. It's it is basically. integrated in there. It's it, I I wanted to do more with it, but unfortunately, time constraints. It's kind of basic, but it's there. It wasn't there in years past, so I'm just happy it's there this year. <laughs> But uh, it, it's in there, walks through just uh, how it's set up. So we have a simple little, uh, you know, uh, you target. It walks through, uh, you know, seeing how things are configured. And I have it configured to a simple little web page go, and you just can't refresh. You yeah. set, it's set for round robin, so it goes through different pages, uh, you know, just so you can see it's working. Yeah. Uh, so it's there, but uh, the the most important thing, I think, for me, I build the labs uh, so I can use them with my partners. I was going to say, yeah. yeah, so when, other than coming to explore and having access to labs here, these are obviously available on demand yes. um, through the, uh, the web. So what situations would you recommend? There's obviously VMware staff <laughs> watching this, there's obviously partners watching this. So when can they use these hands-on labs? Well, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. They are available year round. The ones we build, we do a big dev cycle leading up to the show. Uh, th that's our main target. And so all the new labs are here this week, uh, but they will be published on the main website usually a couple weeks later. Uh, and then, you know, anybody can access them. And I use them when I'm working with my partners, when I'm visiting them or on Zoom. Uh, I use them for test dev. I use them for demo. I use them for POC. Yeah. Uh, so I build the lab in a way that I can use in hopes that others can use it the same way. Cool. And just while I'm thinking about it, it's a test dev, so is CSE included, container service extension? That's another one that I got in there to show functionality, but unfortunately the way the networking in the labs works, we couldn't get it to actually get out. And the new version dropped where you can use a local repository. I couldn't didn't have time to get that in there before we had to freeze the pod, but Excellent. at least the basic functionality to show, and I think that's in the what's new module also, yeah. is just showing that it's there and, and basic functionality of using it. Obviously, if somebody is building it in their production environment, it, you know, they'll get more, but it's just there so they can see the basic functionality and understand it. Okay, and I guess the same with object storage. Is that there as well? That is not there. I didn't uh, have time or space because 
my lap was already oversized. <laughs> uh, but but I, I was talking to a guy last night. We want to maybe build that in next year, okay. or maybe in a refresh mid year. We'll see. Let's talk about your rear portfolio. You obviously got a ten and a half working in VCT uh, environment. Good question. Yeah. So we have uh, you know, ops in there, uh, log insight, and the modules are named. Yeah. ARIA operations and ARIA operations for logs to yeah. make the marketing people happy. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the product names in the lab still have the old V realized names, so I call that out in the manual. Yeah. It's like okay, this is what the product is named marketing wise, but we're gonna just refer to it by the name you see in the product as you're working on. It. So, yeah. I you know I'll just call it ops and logs uh, or log insight. So we have separate modules covering each of those, showing integration with Cloud Director, taking advantage of the you know Cloud Director management pack and operations, uh, and as you mentioned, you know chargeback. Chargeback. Uh, so and, and so that's all in there. Exactly. Uh, and then there's a separate module showing integration uh, with Log Insight and the content pack. Right. So, just want to say thank you, right? Because you've been diligent in doing this for the last five, six, seven years, like you said, and I know a lot of people see a lot of value from this, and uh, you know, I know how hard it must be to deploy all of this in nested environments and get it all out so it can be automated and things, but VCD is the, the power behind this show is uh, you know, actually doing all this automation as well, so it's like we're reading our own dog food or drinking our own champagne, yes. whatever what expression you want to use. Yeah, so it's, it's fun. I, I enjoy it. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it's been fun watching things evolve over the years, and uh, you know, and like I said, I do build the lab for self-serving purposes. So, yeah. <laughs> if anyone I take knows advantage what of that. Needs to be there, it's you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what about um, other sorts of labs that are available? What what would be relevant to like cloud providers or you know professionals who want to get the experience? So yeah, I know we talked about there are you know just kind of the VCD 101 lab, and then there's the uh, cloud Director Availability Lab. Uh, another lab that uh, we created for cloud providers this year is uh, the Cloud Director Lightning Lab. So uh, our Lightning Labs, uh, we have different Lightning Labs for different products, and the idea behind them is that it's 30 minutes or less. You know, it's designed for you know people at the show in between sessions don't have a lot of time. They just want to jump in, take a quick lab, and go to their next Grab session. Coffee, do a lab. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, a few years back, uh, they asked me, uh, hey, uh, do you want to create a lightning lab out of one of your labs? And I was like, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. So I was, it was scrolling through and I saw uh, we have a module that's focused on consumption of ECD resources. And so I thought it would probably be cool if we had one showing uh, tenant access only, just focused on a tenant using VCD yeah. resources. Tenant's use cases, yeah. Yes. So uh, my partners, my cloud provider partners, or, you know, often ask what training resources can we provide them that they can provide to their customers. Sure. And so I thought that would be a perfect opportunity. So I built it a few years ago, but then we didn't have the VCD lab for the past couple of years. So this year brought it back and I thought, let's bring the lightning lab back. <laughs> and we have it. So it's a 30 minute lab. What type of um, <clears throat> things can a tenant do in that lab? So it shows a basic navigation, logging in, understanding the data center uh, concept, uh, deploying a, a VM or VM from OVF, like uploading an OVF, uh, deploying from catalog, and then creating a VM. So it's it's simple, Pretty simple. but get you going functional. type of thing. Absolutely, give you a little bit of hands-on experience. Exactly. Thanks, <laughs> Eric. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, guy. Hey, my name is Josh Green. I work with Hands On Labs as an architect, building the labs. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm standing in front of the command center wall. This is actually looking at data live from the four clouds we're using to deploy all of the pods inside the Hands On Labs experience. So we have a private cloud dashboard. We have a public cloud dashboard. We have everything all together, where we're seeing the entire thing put together in just a big instance. We have physical cluster consumption down here, so we know our clusters are okay, even if we're getting a little red on CPU. Over here, we have vCloud director 
consumption. So these are our, our OVDCs, which would be mapped to a vCenter, all of these. And it's just showing you how warm we're running right now. So like very busy. So we have lots of pods deployed. vPod Director is doing a great job of keeping them going via an automated API call to vPod Director. No one's logging in and deploying a pod. We're actually doing this via scripting. So how many um, how many uh, instances of labs has Cloud Director actually provisioned today? So right now, powered on, we have 10,000 just in the private and over 4,000, closer to 15,000 total powered on VMs right now. That's crazy. That's yeah. absolutely crazy. Yeah. And uh, Cloud Director is managing like the whole provisioning of all the back end? All of it. Right. Okay. Every single piece of it, and it's being automated against uh, in the back at the knock, and all the way on the other side of the hands-on labs, it's the guys that are making sure that this capacity doesn't fall over. So we have teams from the cloud operations team back there. We have a guy from that. We have a performance engineer uh, back there making sure that this stuff doesn't fall over. And normally, I'm back there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that we're running about concurrently. We can do 500 labs at any given time or more. So what we're looking at back here is basically all of the stats from all of the labs that are running concurrently at the moment. Like you said, there's what, uh, 4,000 uh, public cloud, 10,000 private cloud. That's just VMs. Labs are about 500 labs at any given time. Okay. And these are being instantly provisioned? They're being provisioned in a way because we're deploying miniature software-defined data centers that are nested. So we have to provision them earlier, which is why we have automation. We have a schedule and we say, okay, we need X amount of pods for these customers to take. When they hit enroll, they need a hot lap. They don't need to wait. So we do it two hours ahead of time on automation, send off the request to BCD, the pod director, and the pod director provisions it. We get a response. Are you using a Terraform infrastructure provider to do the automation in Cloud Director or nope. Cloud Director APIs? Cloud Director APIs. Right. right and, okay. and VMware Learning Platform APIs, both working in tandem. Okay, and you got load balancing and all of the, the advanced load balance of working at the back end here as well? Yes, and all of this is NSXT based. Nice. So nice. we have labs inside here running Avi, advanced load balancer labs people can learn. We have every kind of lab, every kind of product you can imagine running inside hands on labs in a nested SDBC. Everything from BCF to hugging face to any, anything. And so, how long does it take to kind of set up something like this? Because this is obviously a significant amount of time. Significant right? amount of time. We, we ask each volunteer, which are usually field SEs, because we want people close to the customer telling a story in the pod. We don't want to just put any kind of technology in there. We want real life um, environments that customers take and are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So, we tell them anywhere from 200 to 400 hours of work to build one pod. Wow. And it is always about 200 to 400 hours to build <laughs> So, and, uh, yeah.